So, you know how in the last video I said that I was kind of done drinking medicine? Well, I guess since I'm still in Ecuador, I'm not quite done. Or I'm not quite finished with this chapter. I'm here for at least another six days. I fly out in six days. So on Tuesday, I did another ayahuasca ceremony. And yesterday I smoked changa, changa for the first time. This is my fourth type of DMT um, experience. And changa, I really don't have the words to explain what happened. It all happened so quickly and I always remember that first smell and also like that first kind of feeling when smoking DMT. It's like you're start you're starting to go through this like tunnel of reality shifting. You start to kind of like realize the simulation, okay? And it's super weird and kind of like robotic. This I experienced with the changa as well. And then when I like blasted out, I just completely got morphed into something there are no words to describe this I don't even I'm trying so hard to put words to this <laughs> they're not coming um, the whole experience was really quick I recorded it it was about 25 minutes from beginning to the very end you know from the beginning of like me inhaling to the very very end of like the visuals being completely gone <laughs> Mm, I do have to say that once I started coming down, the visuals were very similar to LSD. To like LSD when you're almost like peaking, you know, like everything is breathing and everything is moving. And if you like focus on a point for long enough, you start to really like open up a new portal into that space that you're just staring blankly into. Um, so the visuals are very similar to LSD. Even though it's been a really long time since I, since I have done LSD, it's been almost two years. Holy shit! So once I inhaled, I only had to inhale twice because like I inhaled really long and really deep, and I held it for about 15 seconds each time, and it took tw twice. Uh, twice was enough for me to blast out. And uh, yeah, I can't quite remember what I saw I just like I remember bits and pieces I remember there's a lot of purple and I remember like I was completely sucked into a com and into a completely different reality I mean it's I have no words to describe this thing and then you kind of start to forget these things once the once you come out of the experience pretty quickly one thing that I do remember quite well is the perception of time once that second inhale hit me, I was gone. Like, and with that time just ceased to exist. Like, the concept of time seemed so silly and irrelevant. And it was like, the concept of time was not even existent. Again, no way to describe these experiences. Um, and then once I came out of it, and I went for a walk. I like went to a cafe to sit down and write my experience of the ayahuasca journey that I had two days before that on Tuesday. Right? What day is it? I'm losing track of my days. I think today is Saturday, but I could be wrong. Let's check. Oh, what? Today is Tuesday? Oh, this is crazy. So I guess I drank ayahuasca last Tuesday. <laughs> All right, last Tuesday. That makes a lot more sense. Um. So I went to the cafe to write about not necessarily the re the realization that I received from Tuesday of last week's ceremony, which was my last ayahuasca ceremony here. This has been kind of like an evolving vision that I have been receiving with little bits and pieces over the last five years. And I am st starting to put words to this experience. And so yesterday I finally was able to like write it down and get it written down on paper because as some of you might know it's really difficult 
to find words to describe what you're seeing or what you're experiencing. So this experience has been kind of evolving over the last five years as I've been diving deeper into this realm. And I do want to share this. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have even made a video. <laughs> Because I have so much going on, I'm needing to like tie up some loose ends here. I pulled a muscle in my neck like a couple days ago. Mm, actually, more than a couple days ago. It's been a week already. Damn, time is flying. Yeah, and it just can't seem to go away. And it, anything I do is not helping it at all. So I'm in a lot of pain right here. I'm going to go see a chiropractor right before I fly out to the States. I found a really good chiropractor in Guayaquil. So I'm going to Guayaquil a day earlier. Not that you needed that update, but yeah. Lots lots of things happening. So the only reason I do want to make this video is because I do want to share this experience, this evolving vision, like I call it, because that's really the only way to call it. There's really no other way to describe this realization. And again, this has been kind of evolving for like the last five years. And this has played a major part in my awakening to the current reality that we are actually living in. So, here we go. Okay. And I'm just going to read it and maybe stop to, to elaborate on some things here and there. But mainly I'm just going to read it, okay? Because it's a lot. Okay. So, I don't know why I'm so nervous. <laughs> I don't usually get this nervous, especially when I'm reading something. Uh, freestyling it is a little bit more nerve-wracking. Okay. So, anyways... Again, it's not so easy to explain these things as these are like multifaceted um, subjects. So just bear with me, okay? All the people who hold power or have any significant influence in the spotlight, such as celebrities, this includes actors, artists, producers, um, perhaps even social media influencers, kind of like Mr. Beast, for example. Yeah. Um, politicians, this includes presidents, monarchs, even philanthropists, economists, etc. Okay. CEOs of mega corporations such as BlackRock, Vanguard, Meta, JP Morgan, Chase, um, etc. News anchors, okay, like Lester Holt, Anderson Cooper, Tucker Carlson, etc. And any person who you will see displayed or broadcasted in mainstream media to have you look at what they are doing, saying, wearing, or who they are voting for, etc. Okay, um, and of course the one percent of the one percent, which is the rest of the billionaires like Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Klaus Schwab, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, etc. These people have all signed a contract with low vibrational forces. Okay, now before you get defensive, let me explain. No, they did not sell their soul to the devil. You cannot sell your soul. That's not a thing. Your soul is a multidimensional, energetic plasma being of light, frequency, and vibration. It is not bound by time nor dimension. Your soul is a particle of God source, and it is the vibration of God itself, embodying a physical, tangible, human vessel, reincarnating into countless lives here. Therefore, you cannot sell your soul to the devil. You cannot sell something that is not bound to this reality, okay? Your soul is not bound to this reality. Money is. Monetary transactions only exist in this dimension, okay? And this reptilian force, Satan or demons, whatever, is God experiencing himself also as Satan or an evil force ruling the 4D reality, okay? So like the God of this matrix, that's what Satan is known to be. That's still God experiencing himself as this entity that is ruling this earth in evil ways. So to translate this into religious vocabulary, God is Satan who is performing a crucial part in this physical reality as an evil force. Therefore, you'd be selling a concept of a soul back to God, essentially, okay? So let's just take a moment for that to sink in, for it to make sense, you know? Like, for you to sell your soul to the devil, you'd still be selling it back to God, essentially, because in this sense, when you zoom way out and you're looking at it like that, it's still a particle of God that came here into this reality to experience this physical, tangible reality as Satan, okay? So this is why selling your soul to the devil is not a thing, okay? 
there's other reasons for it too, but they're just a lot more complex to explain that way. Anyways, however, what you can do is you can sign an agreement, contract, that gives permission to a reptilian entity to embody your vessel alongside your soul for the period of this lifetime. Okay? Yes, like possession. For the religious folks to be on the same page here, um, let me remind you, we're all talking about the same thing, just using different words to describe these things. Okay? So you might say, she sold her soul when I say her host embodies a reptilian entity. We're actually talking about the same thing here. Okay? Um, and so let's just keep an open mind as we continue. Um, when the time comes to perform or make an influence in the spotlight, whether this be on stage in front of thousands or in a private setting with just one person, this entity takes over the driver's seat of the host in order to be the influence, right, that they want to be, in order to suck the energy of whoever they are influencing, whether it be a thousand people, 10,000 people, or whether it be just one person, like someone that they really need to influence a certain type of way. Okay, we're on the same page here. So when the entity takes over the driver's seat, the soul is pushed behind a curtain with no power to do anything. Okay. Now, when the host is chilling, just cooking food, you know, taking a shower, doing normal human activities, the soul is in the driver's seat and the entity is now on standby. Let's take Taylor Swift, for example, simply because she's one of the most popular figures on earth at this time. Okay. We're not picking on her. Um, we're picking her. Now, it's not as black and white as simply calling her a reptilian sellout. Okay. There are multiple things that can be happening with her here. For example, Exhibit A. She signed the contract fully knowing what she was getting herself into, making a cognitive decision to hop on this glamorously hellish ride of a lifetime because A. She wanted the fame, wealth, and power. B. Because she's already experienced this exact embodiment, possession, agreement in her previous life and wanted to continue the agreement in her current life because of fame, wealth, and power, whatever the reason may be. Or any number of reasons why people would choose to sign this contract knowingly. There, there could be an infinite number of reasons here, okay? There could be blackmail. There, there could be life-threatening. I don't know. Any number of reasons, okay? I also believe that there could be a situation where a host doesn't really have much of a choice anymore because they've been on this ride for many, many lifetimes. But this is a lot more complex to explain, okay? Because of all the many contributing factors in this scenario. So we're not going to go there. Now, exhibit B. She could have signed the contract not knowing what she was getting herself into because of tricky and elaborate contract wording or uh, cognitive impairment or peer pressure, you know, again, etc. It could be anything. And... Because she signed the contract not knowing what she was getting herself into, she, A, now lives with this entity unknowingly, right? Like, in, com in complete ignorant bliss. Or medicating with legal or illegal substances. She's medicating because she doesn't want to feel that there is something wrong with her, so she's medicating, right? Or she could be complete ignorant bliss. I don't know. Um, B, is suspecting something isn't quite right with her, but doesn't really know what it is. C is suspecting something is wrong and thinks she is on the brink of psychosis. D is suspecting something is wrong and has an idea of what it is, but doesn't know what to do about it because the fear of social rejection, right? So she's afraid of speaking out because she's afraid of being called crazy. E became completely aware of what is happening with her, but doesn't know what to do about it or does know what to do about it and is openly speaking out about selling her soul to the devil and exposing the evil shit the cabal elitists are doing, okay? Now exhibit C, she signed the contract fully knowing, fully knowing what she was getting herself into, but is now fully regretting this decision and is either speaking out about it or is suppressing it, okay? Now, I'm sure when I listed those exhibits, you had some celebrities pop up into your mind, right? That's great. I also brought up some examples. My examples are just purely based on uneducated assumptions. I don't follow pop culture, so I don't really keep up with any of this stuff. I just know based on the social media reels that I see or the social media videos, you know, on YouTube, whatever pops up into my feed. Um, that's the only way that I really know what celebrities are saying what. So this is 
don't take it too personally that I'm mentioning some of these celebrities because I don't actually know them. And let me remind you, neither do you, right? So these are just uneducated examples. Uneducated, based on complete assumption examples. And these are just from my perspective. Side note, right? Let's just, let's just put that out there. So basically... There are a million different possible scenarios and possibilities of what is actually happening with a host that has signed one of these contracts, okay? The main point here is to understand we could never know the real reason a person does what they do, and the lesson is obviously not to judge the actions of others. Moving on. The why is not the point of this write-up anyways. This was just needed to be said in order to kind of understand the point that I'm trying to make as we go on. Now, if we're all still on the same page, let's continue. Let's think of Michael Jackson, Prince, Whitney Houston, Robin Williams, Tupac, Avicii, Amy Winehouse, etc. Okay, the ones who either committed suicide or overdosed or bluntly put murdered by the reptilian cabal for speaking out or were not mentally stable enough to be controlled with drugs or a personal handler. Okay. These are examples of a host who could have never known they signed a contract and could have never known they embodied a reptilian entity, but they knew something wasn't right. And I say they could have because we'll never really know for sure, right? They could have also knowingly signed the contract, but with time, they realized they no longer wanted to be a part of this sick game. Now, think of Kanye West, Ryan Garcia, Jim Carrey, and so many rappers who have bluntly spoken out that they sold their soul to the devil, okay, on podcasts and documentaries. I don't know their names. I would have listed them, but I just don't listen to rap. Um, I actually don't follow pop culture, period, which I've already mentioned. So they spoke out, right, and something changed, where now they are not the same person as they were before. And I can only bring up Kanye West as a prime example of this because just a little over a year ago, he was professing loud and clear about the evil happening in Hollywood and in the U.S. Capitol. So before he was even endorsing Trump and proudly wearing a MAGA cap, now he is promoting Balenciaga, a child trafficking fashion brand and is no longer screaming about the vile things happening in Hollywood, okay? Also, did you notice he hasn't appeared on any new podcasts in, like, almost two years now? He has become completely silent, not like Kanye at all, right? Because, like, I remember him being all over the place, you know, just constantly blabbing about this and about that. But yet, he makes public appearances with his new wife, who is outrageously dressed with, like, two inches of cloth to cover her privates crazy crazy shit if you haven't seen this go look into Kanye and Bianca um it's just nuts what she's wearing it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever it's not even fashion and she's not even promoting Kanye's brand it's just so crazy what she's wearing like the one picture that comes into mind is when she's wearing like tights like see-through tights and she's holding a fucking hotel pillow to cover her her chest because she's completely nude underneath so like is that fashion is that a fashion statement to to have a pillow that you have to hold around yourself in order to cover your privates and you call that a top like I don't know what is going on there but it just does not make any sense okay doesn't this strike you as weird right especially with elections right around the corner he was endorsing Trump heavily last year but now all of a sudden he's completely silent this is a perfect example of a host who rebelled against the reptilian force It could be the reptilian entity inside him causing this rebellion against his own reptilian breed. Still following? The real Kanye West is either dead and we now see a clone, or he's heavily medicated and his wife is a handler, making sure he's kept under control. Either way, his brand remains alive to feed the beast of the Matrix. They will hold off killing a mega celebrity as long as possible because the celebrity's brand is too profitable and they will milk this brand as much as they can. So they will try to find a way to keep this brand alive even if they have to kill the host and replace it with a clone. The brand must continue, okay? And we can assume Justin Bieber is living this nightmare as well. Look, he's promoting Balenciaga as well, very heavily. Half of the things that him and his wife Haley are wearing are is Balenciaga. And the other time he's wearing Drew, which is a company that he also founded with Ryan Good, I think, or something like that. I can't remember exactly. They're milking these 
brands because Drew is one of the most popular brands amongst the celebrities um, right now. And so we can assume that Justin Bieber is also living this nightmare. Um, Look at his life. Becoming a huge child star overnight to now struggling with substance abuse and depression and selling all rights to his music. He did that just like what, in the last year or two? Um, He literally sold all his rights to his music. So you won't be able to unsee the things I am saying here, and you won't have to look very far. A simple scroll through this Instagram feed will reveal that this host is really struggling internally. Justin Bieber, again, talking about this. Kanye, not so much, because he like he goes through these phases where he like deletes his, his Instagram photos. Um, other celebrities, for example, Sam Smith, Jay-Z, Madonna, Lady Gaga, Doja Cat, Katy Perry, we could say Beyonce, probably even Rihanna in this, are openly showing through their music that not only did they knowingly sign the contract, they are proud of the contract they have signed, okay? And then, and here, if you know, you know. I don't want to go too deep in this because there could also be different things, like they are revealing that they are a part of the Illuminati, you know, to help other people awaken faster and be like, hey, look into this. Why are we all repeating the same freaking sign? You know, why are we closing our eye? Why are, why are we holding our hands like this? They could be trying to give signals to the public so the public can like kind of wake up a bit. Or it could be the complete opposite, right? They could just be continuously shoving it into your face to mock you and be like you're a fucking moron because you don't know what we're doing even though we're showing it right into your face like you got to be a fucking dumbass to not see this or they could be completely just proud of it and you know just showing off that they are part of an elitist group of some sort of cabal who the fuck knows honestly it could be any of those reasons doesn't matter again and some celebrities for example miley cyrus brad pitt shakira zendaya uh emma watson mariah carey etc again take my examples with a grain of salt because i don't know pop culture um they are completely oblivious to the fact that they are sharing their temple with the reptilian entity okay so again we can have celebrities who have signed the contract completely unknowingly they can agree they can have agreed to this completely unknowing that they were going to allow a reptilian entity to embody them for the remainder of their life and now they're just living in their fame wealth and power you know just living their life vacations travel you know spending as much money as they want on anything they want because they just have a an excess amount of it they just don't even know what to do with it okay so they're just like living their best life completely ignorant to reality again my examples are obviously an uneducated assumption based off the little i know about pop culture so i don't follow celebrities and i honestly had to google a list of celebrities in order to even remember the ones that i mentioned but i hope you do understand the point i'm trying to make here okay now just to make sure we're all on the same page here okay i want to briefly go over who the reptilians are so it's the they of all conspiracy stories ever told, all right? So maybe you've heard someone tell you a conspiracy theory and say, they are poisoning all our food, or they are spraying shit from the skies, or they are destroying the families. Um, That's them. They are the they, okay? In those conspiracy stories that people are talking about. And they are reptilians. They're the reptilians. So these are shape-shifting, interdimensional beings, a.k.a. extraterrestrial entities, okay? Often explained through ancient artifacts as a fourth-dimensional species that has infiltrated human society, masquerading as world leaders and influential figures, being able to manipulate this three-dimensional world. Okay, I had to pay for the gas. And... I literally paid the guy in pennies, which was really heartbreaking, but it was $3 to replace the gas, and nobody carries change with them. Anywho, back to the reptilians, yeah? So they're able to manipulate this third dimensional reality as they wish. They're, they're, they're gods here, basically. In, our, in the reality that we see, they're basically God, okay? This is why religion texts refer to this force or this energy as Satan, as the God of this world, because they're able to manipulate this reality. And they have been manipulating and controlling humanity, disguising themselves as humans or embodying human hosts to maintain their dominance over humanity for thousands of years, okay? And we can only date this back probably to the, to the Sumerians, but this probably goes 
back to the very beginning, okay? This this energy force itself, right? This energy force is not necessarily like it wasn't always a reptilian energy force. This energy force probably was here from the beginning of the Big Bang. And I hate that the Big Bang is associated with atheism because I don't see it like that. I believe that God, the one and only, the one and only true God, created this whole reality, but I don't believe that he created in, you know, in a week the way that the Bible talks about. I believe that it actually did happen through evolution, through all of these little things. No, I don't believe we evolved through apes. And no, I don't believe that the dinosaurs are now birds. I don't believe in that type of evolution, if that makes sense. But I do believe that all of these things the, and the shifting of the human species, for example, I believe that it did happen over time. We're still the same kind of human body. We did not evolve through apes. So my version of evolution and the Big Bang are very, very different from an atheist's perspective. I don't believe everything is chaos. I don't believe that we came here from, you know, a Big Bang in that sense. I believe that there was there was movement and there was plasma that was at work to create this, okay? So, for example, when God did create this reality, it was nothing but just a round ball of darkness and void and this is the yin energy this is the energy of creation this is the divine feminine and so god penetrated through this ball of nothing of darkness and in this reality she birthed us us as the first burst of consciousness she birthed us as light so our very first experience of this reality was light particles okay so this is what i mean by the evolution, the evolution of our consciousness, okay? And so we've experienced so many different lives. We've experienced animal lives, insect lives. We've experienced being particles of air, okay? Because we are all particles of God source. So all of this that is in this reality, in, <coughs> in this void, it was all created by God source, okay? And so God then separated himself into an infinite, infinite amount of particles to experience the infinite amount of consciousness that exists on here, right? Like a, a tiny microscopic parasite of some sort. That is still consciousness and that is still God experiencing something through that parasite, okay? If that makes sense. This is where I'm coming from. Um, God is very real nothing is by chance nothing is by chance and to say you know that we have evolved here to be exactly as we are this is and that god does not exist is just crazy look at us look at the way that the body is made how could you say that this was all random you know random evolution wild okay so back to the reptilians okay so they've been manipulating controlling humanity and they've been constructing empires after empires and hiding right under our noses okay lifetime after lifetime um so just to just to paint a picture like these guys have been here for a really long time um they feed off the vibrations of fear suffering and gluttony okay greed corruption resentment rage envy hate narcissism etc etc to sustain their grip on power and orchestrate chaos while the masses remain oblivious okay this is so they they continue to feed off of these vibrations as they orchestrate chaos in order to sustain their grip on power okay everything this is really important everything we see in mainstream media is their charade to keep the control over our species. Everything you see on mainstream media, okay? Especially on the news, um, on any of the cable channels that you will see, it is all strategically placed there. It is all strategically orchestrated in order to program the masses in any way they want. And that's in order to instill more fear into the masses. Um, you know, just many different reasons but we are under their control at all times okay they thrive on chaos and manipulation pulling the strings behind the scenes while feasting on the energy of the naive and the unsuspecting masses okay they're not bound by our 3d view of the world they are playing a gnarly game beyond our comprehension so again religious teachings refer to this reptilian force as satan or his demon posse and if this helps you understand that this force is 100% real and alive on Earth today, 
then let the stories of the Bible be your saving grace. I'm not here to judge. What I really want people to understand is that one does not need to believe in the Bible in order to know and be aware of this force. One can simply see this force as yin, okay? Once again, coming back to how I see the creation of this reality, it started as God created the void. This was yin, you know, the yin energy. And then once we were birthed in this in this reality as light, that's the yang energy. So it's constantly holding this balance. So before any of this physical tangible exi is existed, there was only darkness and light. That's it. That was where it all began. This reality began from just the dark and the light. And this is the yin and the yang. And this balance has to remain until the end of times. Okay. And this is a beautiful fucking masterpiece. Like, unbelievable how beautiful this all is like when you really see this and understand this like you realize how perfect everything is even with the whole reptilian energy controlling humanity for eons it's unbelievably how magically beautiful this masterpiece is okay this is where i'm trying to get out as well as other things so one can simply see this force as the yin of to the yang and the yin yang <laughs> sounds like a rap um representing the duality of this reality oh again <laughs> and showcasing how seemingly opposing forces are interconnected and interdependent okay i'm gonna say that again uh one can simply see this force as the yin to the yang in the yin yang symbol representing the duality of this reality and showcasing how seemingly opposing forces are interconnected and interdependent so this is neither good nor bad. That's just simply here as needed for our human experience. And in order to have a front, there is a back. Okay. In order to have an up, there is a down. And because we have chaos, there is harmony. Okay. So it's a philosophical dance and it has driven many people to the brink of psychosis as they fight between the light and the dark because they're attaching words like evil and good to these things but this exact realization is what will set humanity free from suffering okay it's 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 understanding this dance between the duality and understanding how everything is actually perfectly calculated for this grand masterpiece to play out perfectly right like i keep saying perfect because it actually is perfect now that we've established who the reptilians are let's return back to our taylor swift example whether she knows it or not that she is hosting a reptilian entity Let's just say she has a child. This child can be born as a full reptilian, okay? Born of the matrix with no God DNA. That means no particle, no God source particle that we have, right? Or, I mean, that the rest of the consciousness has. The, the consciousness that God wants to experience life as, right? So this is really important to understand and i'm not sure if i can articulate it correctly i'm going to try my best here so this child can be born as a full reptilian born of the matrix which means it's, it's been created means it has a host simply because it was born in in this reality okay and so this matrix because it embodies taylor swift again she's just an example because this reptilian entity embodies taylor swift it, and Taylor Swift has a baby. Now this reptilian entity can take over the baby's full host without having to share it with a with God DNA. Does that make sense? Um, and so this child can live its entire life not realizing it is a reptilian and not a human being like the rest of the human species it lives amongst. Okay, because the child still has a human mind, right? A human brain. And so there's still that voice in the head, which is the mind. And that's separate from any soul. And that's separate from any possession of an entity. So this child can live its entire life not realizing it is a reptilian and not a human being like the rest of the human species that it lives amongst because it looks in the mirror and it sees, it's, and it sees that it's human. But say it does come to realize it. And instead of choosing to participate in the destruction of humanity, like the rest of the reptilian breed, it chooses to side with us instead. And it chooses to progress in the human evolution. We'll get to that a little later. Um, it can also start to rebel and speak out against those controlling authorities to inform the public of the atrocities that are happening in the 3D world, right? Like speaking out um, about 9-11 and Pizzagate and talking about how evil and corrupt the Clintons are and talking about the real reason why George W. Bush went into war with Afghanistan and why the fuck we have troops in Iran. Just the crazy shit that the authorities are doing. 
Because say, for example, this host, which is Taylor Swift's child, right, grows up and realizes what's happening internally and realizes all these things, it can shift and it can make these changes going forward. Also, reptilian entities can change sides too. There are many good reptilian entities walking this planet alongside us, helping the evolution of humanity into shifting into higher vibrations, okay? Because what is really happening here on Earth is that we are coming to a massive vibrational shift. We have been for thousands of years. It's just a very slow process. And when the shift is complete, the reptilians that have been in this child-sacrificing, never-ending ritual of control over humanity, they will be destroyed, Okay, they will, the reptilians, the bad reptilians, they will be destroyed in this shift that is, that planet Earth is making, okay? And perhaps this is what the the Christians are talking about as, you know, Christ coming back and um, the rapture is that we're shifting. Our our bodies are shifting into a completely different vibrational frequency. And so the Bible even talks about how we're going to have a new body. This is exactly the same thing. We're on the same page, except the Bible likes to show these things in terror and say that if you don't repent and believe on Jesus Christ as your ultimate savior, you're going to burn in hell for eternity. Okay, this is this is crazy talk. This this doesn't happen because when you see what God really is, God is unconditional love. God does not punish somebody. Even if he turns, even if, you know, the Christians like to say, but it's not God turning away from you. It's you turning away from God. Okay, well, let's take a parent, for example. If the child keeps misbehaving and misbehaving and misbehaving their entire life, does the parent stop loving the child? Is the parent ever going to come to a point where they're like, that's it. I don't know you. You are not mine ever again, right? Like, no, unconditional love will continue to love that child until it dies. Doesn't matter how many mistakes the child makes. Doesn't matter how many times the child child hurts the parents. It, unconditional love means exactly that. It's unconditional. There are no conditions to this love. That means there are no sins that can be committed that, you know, that will keep you away from God's love. And the biggest giveaway of who the God of the Bible truly is, is the fact that it says that there is one sin that God will never forgive, right? It's the, the sin of blasphemy. Um, correct me if I'm wrong the that's the one sin that god will never forgive okay so which is wild because again how can you have an unconditional loving god that has this exception i am unconditionally loving however there is one condition therefore there therefore this god is a conditional loving god this is a god that says you will have no other gods but me. If you have other gods, that's it. You know, like, oh, I don't need you. This this God of the Bible is depicted and described as like a three-year-old toddler who is just outrageous and angry <laughs> and jealous. And how can you be unconditionally loving but also be jealous at the same time? You know, how can you be unconditionally loving but also have rage? You know, rage for righteousness. If there's rage for righteousness, then that doesn't make you an unconditionally loving God. That There's a condition right there, you know, that makes you righteously enraged. There's something that makes you righteously enraged, right? I don't know how else to explain these things, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Is that the God of the Bible is not an unconditional loving God. And it's very obvious when you start to look at life this way. So therefore... These reptilians will be destroyed, and that means they will not shift into these higher vibrations that we are, okay? And these higher vibrations are vibrations where anger, envy, jealousy, rage, resentment, um, corruption, these things don't exist there because these are vibrations of fear, okay? So we are vibrating into a vibration of pure love, which is unconditional love, okay? And this is where the planet is vibrating into, is in pure, into pure unconditional love. And these four dimensional beings, they cannot, um, they cannot rise into that vibration because they, they, they don't vibrate in that. They vibrate in fear. 
So there are reptilians that have changed sides, okay? Because they do not want to be destroyed or left behind. And what that means is that simply that they're going to get stuck in this dimension that they're already vibrating in, um, which is this frequency. So it doesn't mean they're going to hell. It doesn't mean that they're going to hell for eternity. It just means that they are... They're basically no longer going to be gods on this planet as they have been for all of these thousands of years. All right. So this is why some reptilians are changing sides and they want to change. You know, they want to help to be in this progression of going forward into this loving vibration dimension. This is the most important thing. Everything else is a complete distraction from exactly this. So that's why I'm saying everything that you see on the news, everything that we hear and all of these fights that people have and the resentment and all of the little arguments and the separation and like we're better than you and you know the, the countries are fighting against each other or race is fighting against each other or the, the battle of the sexes like the LGBT and the racial slurs and everything and the economic collapse and the stock market and celebrity gossip and war and inflation all of this is a distraction from this shift that is coming. It is all part of the agenda to divide, confuse, turn us against one another, and to destroy everything good in humanity, okay? To keep our vibration low and dense so that we do not shift into the higher dimensions. So you can say Jesus was warning us of this shift exactly, you know, by saying the time is near. Uh, Jesus was preaching love because love is what you need to be vibrating in in order to make the shift along with the planet. So sin is anything that misaligns us from love that's it right so sin is any distraction essentially so it's not it's not this like condemnable thing that you will burn in an eternal hell if you misalign yourself from god from love which means sin essentially in the religious text but sin is such a scary word right because sin means you're going to hell um what i'm trying to say is that all it means is just a misalignment from love you are no longer vibrating in love you're vibrating out of fear um that's that's a that's the difference there and the consequence of this misalignment it will keep you from shifting with the earth into higher vibrations so this is what religion calls hell Okay. You hear many people these days saying mindlessly, I hope this is my last reincarnation or I feel like this is my last lifetime here. They are feeling the collective energy that is sending them a signal that the never ending cycle of samsara that earth has been stuck in for eternity is actually coming to an end. Crazy shit, I know. And this is what in religious text we can say as Jesus' second coming or rapture again. Call it whatever you want, just don't deny what you're feeling, okay? Because you are feeling something. And this is just me trying to put words to what I'm feeling and what I'm seeing in this evolving vision over the last five years with the medicine. Now, to sum up this word, fuck, my phone decided to die on me. I thought it was well charged to do this video, but then I didn't realize how long this video was. So I have to go back and finish this up. Okay. Basically what I'm saying to sum this whole word vomit up and what I'm really trying to get at is the world is a stage. This is all a show that is run by a highly sophisticated energy force that will stop at nothing to bring complete destruction to life as we know it. Okay. Therefore, it does not matter who you vote for. Okay, let me repeat that with elections right around the corner. It does not fucking matter who you vote for. Okay, everyone in power is playing their game. And the game is rigged. And now you know who they are. Okay, so as a society, we can stop this game when we stop participating in it. It's actually that simple. Don't fall into the trap thinking that we can elect an official who can save the country. And uh, there is no stopping what is coming. There is only distraction from keeping you from realizing what you are. You are love. You are that particle of love. The God DNA that we talked about earlier. Okay, This is the most important thing for all of us to understand is what we truly are. And everything else around that is bullshit. Everything else around us is a distraction from exactly this truth of realizing who you really are. Okay. Now, this has been a really long video. Thank you to everybody who has remained until the very end. Thank you for listening. And thanks for coming back over and over again. And 
<laughs> Anyways, I think this will be my last video here in Ecuador as I finish up my travels. The next one will probably be from the States. And by then, I shall have an adapter, the lightning cable adapter for my microphone. And I don't have to use this little guy anymore. Um, but anyways, this is kind of cool too. I just do prefer videos from further away. It makes me feel a little less self-conscious. <laughs> <laughs> I've gained weight as you can tell and somebody mentioned that uh, I've aged a lot so yeah shit hurts I feel old I feel like I have aged um, and then every now and then people tell me I look like I'm 24 so I don't know you know maybe I just need to focus more on like rest and exercise and drinking more water yeah I'm gonna go do that peace out